Let's do the second part of the standard toolkit of interme intermediate macroeconomics, which is the LM curve. Okay, the previous video we did the IS curve, the goods market equilibrium. Now we're going to turn to another important part of the story, which is looking at the money market. Now we've done that before in using the uh, real money supply, the money supply adjusted for the for prices, and the demand curve for money, which we denoted as L. And it's the combination of the demand for money and the supply of money which gives us this term LM. That's where L equal to M, where the demand for money equal to the supply of money. So it's a, a an ec set of equilibrium relationships. Now I'm going to be doing this holding the overall prices constant. It's sort of a, a uh, old line Keynesian model. That's not because prices are always uh, the same. It's just a, a place to, to start. You can, uh, you can adjust this model, the LM and the IS curve, for changes in prices, but we're just holding off on that uh, right now. And as discussed in other videos, we have this real money supply, that's the money supply is uh, adjusted or uh, affected by monetary policy and the price level and an interest rate such that the demand for money equal the supply for money. Okay, so we've got, we're familiar with this thing on the left. What we're going to do is to translate this into a different graph with interest rates and output on the two axes. So what I want to emphasize, we're we're not doing anything new with the uh, on the left hand side and really nothing new on the right hand side. We're just graphing it in a different way. So let's pick some arbitrary equilibrium interest rate and let's say that at point A, I'm going to do that over on this side, at point A, it's the combination of an interest rate and GDP such that the money, money demand equal to money supply. Okay? So I don't have national income or GDP explicitly in this graph. It's buried within, within that demand curve. Okay? But we've got some combination of interest rate and output such that this thing holds. Now let's imagine that interest rates have gone up for some reason. How does that affect the situation in the money market. Well, let's take a look. We go back to this graph and we see at higher rates of interest, the cost of holding cash goes up. If interest rates are higher, it may make sense to go put your money into savings accounts or buying a bond. Okay, so you've got this, this alternative use of your funds that become more attractive and as interest rates go up. The opportunity cost of holding cash increases. That's another way of saying that at this higher interest rate, you've got excess supply of money. Well, what would be a way for the demand for money to go up looking at this graph over on the right. Well, if GDP went up, if we had, say, a combination you know, 
at higher interest rates, if we had higher economic activity, you would need more cash to um, meet uh, all your needs to, uh, to buy stuff. So if you had a higher demand for, let me write that same way, if we had higher GDP, we'd have higher demand for cash, you'd have an equilibrium in the, in the money market. So higher interest rates, higher GDP will keep that money market in equilibrium. You got to have, you know, some combination of the two. If you put together all these different combinations of the interest rates and output, such that the money market was in equilibrium, it would be this positive relationship because as interest rates go up, you want to have something that. And, and the demand for money goes down, you need something to compensate for that. For example, an increase in GDP. Okay, so there's the LM curve uh, depiction. All sorts of different interest rates and, and output that'll get, give you, uh, get you that uh, result. One of the most important things that we'll do in using the LM curve is to think about what will happen if there's a change in the money supply. Okay, for the initial level of national income, we've got this equilibrium. And now let's imagine the central bank conducts some sort of monetary operation to increase the nominal uh, uh, stock of money, again, holding prices fixed, that shifts the supply of money to the right there's more currency in circulation. The only way people will be willing to hold more cash is if the interest rate falls. Again, you, should, you need to think about this as the opportunity cost for money. If you've got more money in circulation, the only way I'm going to be willing to, to, to hold it is if the interest rates on bonds falls and I'll say, okay, you know, it's not that big a deal to hold the cash because it, you know, holding my wealth in bonds has, is not as attractive because the interest rates have fallen. So, so as the money supply goes up, interest rates fall. Now let's think about what would happen to the LM curve. Okay, I'm going to label that interest rate as I2. Now, let's think about the, this uh, initial interest rate and output. Now we have a situation where at this initial combination of interest rates and output, we had uh, excess money supply at point A. <clears throat> we need the demand for money to rise. That demand for money will rise at the initial interest rates only if we had some combination, say out here, at higher national income. If I've got higher national income, I'm going to want to, to hold more cash. So at that, with the new level of the money supply and 
the initial interest rates, you'll have to have a higher GDP in order for the money market to, to clear. So the LM curve will tend to shift out. Now, we've got a, a couple of things to note here. So let's compare a couple of different outcomes. Now we started out over here where if you had the uh, increase in the money supply if you, with unchanging output, if interest rates fell to I2, supply and equal demand for money, that's no problem. So essentially, at, if output doesn't change, interest rates would have to fall by this same amount. Okay, just drawn on a different graph. Alternatively, you could have keeping the interest rates the same, if your income went up, it would shift the demand curve for, for money out. You'd get an equilibrium that way. Okay, so the main thing that you want to keep in mind for this situation, the shifters of the LM curve, okay, again, I want to emphasize this is holding prices fixed, is changes in the money supply. An increase in the money supply shifts the LM curve out. Now, generations of students will often think of that LM curve as the supply of money. It's not. Okay. Money supply is depicted over here. This is a new set of equilibrium conditions with interest rates and output with an increased supply of money. Now this may seem like a distinction without a difference, but it really it's it's important that you keep that keep that straight. Okay? The whole comp series of combinations of of, of uh, equilibrium outcomes changes fundamentally when the LM curve shifts uh, to the right because of the change in the money supply. So there's the LM curve. In a separate video, we'll bring the IS and the LM curve together and talk about some of the, um, the, com the changes that occur when both of these curves interact with each other.